It comes down to this, the closest playoff race I think I've ever seen. It's certainly up there. Two games left to go. Four teams battling for two spots. We have made it a habit of missing out on the playoffs at the very end of the season. I certainly hope that doesn't happen again. If it does, that is the death knell, rest assured. And indeed, the Pacific Division is trash. Here we go. Arizona. Arizona Stubbs rolls in with the raid at a wonderful time. We need a win here, and we need it badly. Stubbs, how'd the stream go, by the way? First period, 1-1. Josh Doan, Tyler Peddle. If it's Pedley, I'm going to be disappointed. Second period. <laughs> Beachcoff and Keller were down by two. He had a freeze off. Why do I feel like that happens to every person streaming MLB every night? Macklin scores. Zuccarello ties it. 3-0. We waste a power play. Six and a half to go. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Are we going to overtime? Yes, we are. To overtime we go. In Arizona. Damn. Whoops. Can't wait for the eternal simmed shootout. We shall see if it even gets there. It might not. A win helps us immensely. A loss means it could come down to the last day of the season. Overtime in Arizona. We have at least one point, which helps a lot. Two would help a lot more. Taves recovers. Devon Taves saved by Saros. Plays it out to Ekblad. <sighs> Puck turned over. Cooley shot. Saros handles it. Lobsky, though, what's going on? Get that dub. I certainly hope so. Philip Tomasino and the Arizona Coyotes, mind you. Ekblad over to Zuccarello up ahead. It's Braden Point, the deadline pickup. Point, slap shot, save. Zuccarello to point backhand, save. Jarenko denies Point twice. But Zuccarello and Point, the veterans are cooking. Let them cook. Again, game 81 of the season. The extra point for winning an overtime or the shootout would be huge. Devon Taves up for Keller. Keller the toe drag. By time, Logan Cooley can't pick the corner. Saros the save. As both goaltenders coming up big in this overtime so far. One more time, Cooley and Point on the draw. Cooley wins again. Taves looking, Cooley saves Saros, lose puck. Cooley's gonna come up with it. Ekblad, able to come away with it. Aaron Ekblad to Matt Zuccarello, over for Braden Point. Point, shot broken up, Ekblad glove save. And we're finally gonna have to roll with that second line. Great chances, though, for the first, the veterans. Tomasino on the draw for the Coyotes against Macklin. I'd make that trade in a heartbeat. Tomasino wins the draw. Taves is still out there. Leads it into the zone. Windmills. Devon Taves the backhand. Rises a bit too high. Here's Gostas Bear, the former Yote. Shane Gostas Bear. Arvidsson shot. Loose puck. Tomasino corrals. We need this. The closest we've been to the playoffs. Here's Philip Tomasino. 
We were forced to buy him out or to trade him as Genther shot. Stop by Saros. Get that top line back out there. I went to the Real Madrid Man United game today. It was amazing to see those guys play in person. Yeah, people shit on the exhibition games in the States, but it's still cool. Zuccarello just yeets that out of the zone. No icing. Taves gets hit by Ekblad. Here's Tomasino. Tomasino knocked loose, gets it back. Gunther down low. Tomasino with him. Battled on. Dylan Gunther has it poked away. Foot race for the puck. JJ Moser wins it. Gunther knocked loose by Ekblad. Aaron Ekblad. Over for point. Has the zone to take. Braden Point back. Zuccarello couldn't hold it. Point one timer for Gustus Fair. And Jarenko makes another save. God, we've had good chances. Hayton and Meechkoff on for the Coyotes. Face off one. Fain for Evangelista. Richie stops. Callum Richie. Here's Meechkoff. Shot just wide of the post on Saros. Barrett Hayton at the point. Stripped to the puck by Callum Ritchie. He's in. All alone. Scores. The Preds win in overtime. <sighs> and might we be on our way to the playoffs for the very first time. What a play for Callum Ritchie. Jarenko was looking like a brick wall in this overtime, but a breakaway chance was just too much. A huge goal, the biggest of his young career. Callum Ritchie is the hero. Sends us in the game 82 with a tremendous, tremendous opportunity to make the playoffs if we haven't already, depending on out-of-town results. Oh my god, it's Colorado, the division leader, the division winner. And the pressure's still on. We're not, nobody's confirmed. Not even Minnesota is confirmed. It's a three-way tie at 88 points, Dallas at 86, and they can still make it as Varg drops the sit-down suspension. So somebody will miss this game. <sighs> Taps with a sit down as well. That is two one game suspensions. Heading into this game. Against the division winners. Three sit down suspensions. Make that three. Four sit-down suspensions. You want to go for the fifth one? If we haven't already? Five sit-down suspensions. There you go. Well, you used all of them in one game for the night. Well done. Five players will take a seat. Number 12, Joachim Kamel. Will be out for this game. Number 9, Matt Zuccarello. Will be out for this game. Number 10, Brett Howden. Will be out for this game. Number 11, swear on my grandfather's grave. That's how this rolling thing's going. Adam Lowry. A press box suspension for Cookie. So that'll be a five game suspension coming up for somebody. Why not? And the last one game suspension, number 19, UC Soros, will not be playing in game 82. The five game suspension goes to number two, Braden Point. Oh, congratulations, you officially fucking killed us. So when you bitch about, oh, it's boring, you haven't made the playoffs, just remember the reason why.
Just remember the reason why. Alright, I gotta see if it's even possible for me to sit this many players. Because I don't know if it is. <sighs> Gabriel Day got a 918 on the season. I'm gonna trust Gage Alexander in goal. I'll do what I can to have it not uh, put Soros in. So, no UC Soros. Not a single defenseman, by the way. Let's see what I can do here. So Joachim Kamel is out for Marcus Felino. Soros will be out for Alexander with Grosnick. Alexander's a good kid. He's also huge. So, fingers crossed that works to our benefit. Uh, so, no Kamel, no Soros, Lowry, Howden, Zuccarello, and Point. We'll be without Braden Point for the first four games of the playoffs, should we make it. How are we going to do this? I don't even know if we technically can. Without, uh, we're going to have to be putting people through waivers. Uh, so no Matt Zuccarello. Well, Matthew Wood will certainly get a call up. Matthew Wood will certainly get a call up. And he can sit for Braden points. I'm just trying to walk through this fucking grass. Royal Deadeye with the follow. Thank you for that. We still have Zook, Howden, and Lowry. So yeah, it's going to be a right wing, a left wing, and a center. Right wing will probably end up being Oscarson. I need to look at some AHL numbers here. Well, you certainly know how to kill the drama and the momentum of a uh, of a season sim. Could have known the result by now, but instead I get to fuck around with the rosters for half an hour. Well done, chat. All done. Justin Ertel has been awesome. He's not really our guy, but he is. I mean, he was a signing. All right. Ertel will be in. Oscarson will be in. And uh, we'll bring in Lind. Giving chat power was a mistake. That's funny, because that song is like a slow descent into hell, and that's that's where we're at. That's where we're at. This is indeed a slow descent into hell. Ortel, Oscarson, and Lind. We gotta send down three players, which means we're officially risking waivers. But it is what it is. So Brett Howden. Hey, you guys have probably fucked us here. If I follow through with all the suspensions, we're going to lose somebody on waivers. So that's, uh, that's fun. We got to decide if we want to actually do that at that point, because otherwise, yeah, we're fucked. I mean, Howden and Lowry would have to be dropped, and I'd still have to drop one more guy. If I make Soros the backup, I can't guarantee it won't put him in. So he can't be. He ha we have to have three goalies on the roster. So, I mean, we'll at least say he doesn't get the start, because otherwise we're screwed. So, yeah, I'll send down Grosnick. So, we'll see if we'll uh, lose Howden and Lowry. And, again, if one more suspension comes through, you're basically guaranteeing I lose someone on waivers. So, if you want to be that big of a dick, feel free. Uh, 
confirm. Oh, we didn't lose anybody on waivers, at least. Not yet. We would pretty much be guaranteed to lose somebody next time. So, Ertel is in. Kaelin Lind is in. And Zuccarello is replaced by Oscarson with six suspensions for one game. Gage Alexander will get the start. You see Saros on the bench. Callum Ritchie earned the right to be the top center for this game. That's for sure. Braden points the five game suspension. Macklin, Richie, Arvidsson, Hollis, Svechkov, Evangelista, Ertel, Wood, Felino, Petal, Lind, Oscarson. Defense is McNabb and Ekblad, Fane, Gosses, Bear, Fairbrother. And Prokop, probably. Terrence Fane hasn't been amazing. Nor has Goss to spare, but there's not much I can do there. Make that swap, I guess. Just don't know about the defense here. What we want to do there. Shits and giggles really quickly. This guy's not going to play. I'm say we know Pro Cop would clear waivers. I'm going to see who's been the best defenseman at the AHL level, even if they haven't been overly successful at the NHL level. I at least want to see who deserves... That third pair spot. We'll see what happens. We could still technically make it in with a loss. I mean, it would take some luck, but... In terms of plus minus, it's been... It's been Zaitsev, Matie. Go Brunei and Mathieu for this game. All right. Comes down to this. Comes down to this. Brunei's hurt. Didn't even notice. Oh, congrats to Graham Sward. Oh, am I nearing the end of this? <laughs> no, my goal is to win. Chat's goal is to have me not win. Clearly. All right. We got a shitload of uh, one game suspensions. Braden points out for five. It is our final game of the season. Theoretically, we can still make the playoffs if the Dallas Stars do not win whoever the hell they are playing against. Of course, I can't look because this game is disappointing. Here we go. Comes down to this. Against the division winning Avs. First period, 1 1. Eric Halla on Eustace Anuin. Arturi Lekkinen on the power play. Second period, 2 1. Nashville. Graham Sward. Up by one, heading into the third. Power play goes to waste. Power play. Extended power play goes to waste. For the first time in this franchise mode, the Nashville Predators are going to the playoffs. We wouldn't have made it if we didn't win. Dallas had the tiebreaker if we stayed even in points. Sward was injured heading into that game, so the fact that he got hurt further does not surprise me.
We survived it. Somehow, some way, we fucking survived that. And we will be taking on the Colorado Avalanche in round one. Edmonton will play Winnipeg. St. Louis will play Minnesota. And Vancouver will play Seattle. Jesus. How on earth did we survive that? UC Soros, the 9-1-1, but what a performance from Gage Alexander in game 82. We needed him to show up, and he did. Thank God. Defensively, it was a bit of a nightmare in a lot of ways. I mean, if one defenseman's in the stud category, it's Aaron Ekblad. 37 goals. Aaron Ekblad, definitely our top defender in that regard. Fane obviously wasn't actually that bad. Again, he was on a terrible Buffalo team. He wasn't amazing for us, but he certainly wasn't that bad. And then for the forwards... That many players being a minus is insane. I mean, Victor Arvidsson is probably in that stud category. 40-year-old Matt Zuccarello is probably in that category. Braden Point had 17 points in 20 games in Nashville. In terms of a dud... I mean, yeah, you'd probably be looking at both Evangelista, Macklin. But again, I doubt either of them are coming back, even though we made the playoffs. Like, this is our one shot at actually doing something. I know a lot of people were shouting out Eric Halla. Kamel wasn't great. Tyler Pennell was okay. Man, Oscarson was trash. Back up better playing with point. It's still not enough to keep him. Like, this is the last hurrah. Like, even though we made the playoffs, we're still blowing it up after this. This is our only run. Evangelista is not going to get the money he wants from us. Max not going to get the money he's going to want. Like, this is this core is one shot. Uh, Patrick, we never play, but we do watch AI versus AI. So, in terms of a dud, I don't think we need one, because you could argue they're already off the team and are going to leave anyway, which is typically one of the punishments. It's either they lose an X Factor or they go anyway, so it's like, fuck it, like, they're just going to go. Uh, the stud of the season, I will leave it up to you guys. Again, I think you have one, in, in fairness, too, we kind of checked the AHL, and there's really nobody, nobody in that category. So, in terms of the stud of the season, I mean, if you were looking at a defenseman, it was uh, it was Aaron Eckblad. Easily. Good old Eckbald, as he was called on Discord earlier. And then for forwards, it's either our leading scorer and Victor Arvidsson. This might be his only season here. Zuccarello, who might retire at the end of the season. Or Eric Halla, of all people. We'll see what you guys think if the poll did not pop up in chat. Feel free to refresh. I'll let you guys vote, and hell, we'll get a, a little bit of a boost to our team. But, well, 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 thank you for the 26 months, by the way. Uh, while you guys are voting on that, let's take a look around the league. Now, if the season's over, looks like Eric Hall is going to get voted stud of the season, which stud of the season's really like the Boston Bruins have like the seventh player award type of thing. It's always like, hey, who was the most, like, who's the fan favorite? of the year, basically, and well, it was Eric Halla. Halla could retire, too. But it's fine by me. Connor Bedard, Nathan McKinnon tied for the league lead in points. He had Matthews, Marner, and Burakovsky all at least hitting 100 on the season. Shrews with the follow as well. Thank you for that. Welcome in. Top goal scorer 71 for Connor Bedard. He had 63 for Matthews, McKinnon over 60, and then Kaprizov, Robertson, McDavid, and Caulfield, each with at least 50. Defensively, 106 points for Adam Fox, 101 for Bouchard, 
Makar and P.O. Joseph, all with at least 90. Top goal scorer, though, with 37 was Aaron Ekblad. And 34 for Makar, 31 for Shabbat. Ovi is our coach. You guys fired Roman Yossi after his first win of the season. Ovi took over. Winning us goaltender, Stuart Skinner in Edmonton. Shesterkin apparently plays in Vancouver. Shutout leader with nine, Sorokin. And Archer Akchimov, who we almost fucking traded for numerous times. Was the save percentage king among starters, Stuart Skinner. Rookie of the year is going to be Alex Spooner. I doubt they give it to Emil Hemming. It's probably going to be Alex Spooner. And, uh, hey, Callum Ritchie, he scored a damn big overtime goal. He's my rookie of the year. As Eric Halla has been voted the stud of the season. I said in the rules they have a chance to roll an X Factor, but fuck it. We're giving, uh... <laughs> we're giving Eric Halla an ability. Why the hell not? Eric Halla, we roll an 18... Four, eight, 12, 16, 17. Make it snappy for Eric Halla. Heads, it is gold. Tails, it is silver. Silver, make it snappy for Eric Halla. Due to being voted the fan favorite. So with that, we can pretty much set up our team in full, I hope. Minus Braden point until game five. But it is confirmed for the very first time. Callum, you, I, I'm taking over this answer. Fuck you. Callum, you've been great. What are you talking about? You absolutely get my vote of confidence. How dare you be down on yourself, Callum? You scored that fucking overtime goal. We're in the playoffs for the first time. And it's the division-winning, 57-game-winning avalanche. Yay!